Nikki Wong. Uh, name's Nicholas. Okay. I use pretty much whatever. I let people decide, like, depending on how I'm expressing myself, because I identify as a gender fluid person. So, I feel like it's changed a lot day by day. Not day by day, but they just, they just keep changing, so it's difficult to settle on a set of pronouns. But I don't go by it. That's the one thing I don't use. It's mostly in my clothing, because on some days when I feel more confident in myself, it's like, how well do I pass as male or female? Oftentimes I pass better as a guy than I was born as a guy, so that's just what I do. I dress, I wear regular clothes. If I feel that I can pass better on a different day, like I've been doing my hair for the past year, then I might wear different clothes and ask people, like, hey, I'm dressed a little differently. And it's just looking for a little bit of feedback and seeing how well I pass, but usually it's just changing up my clothes, making myself look more feminine or masculine. Oftentimes, not really. And for some people, it's more of a hard topic because there are people who believe, oh, you have to have dysphoria to be trans. And I don't really know if I ever experienced dysphoria. But sometimes I feel uncomfortable, but I wonder if I made that connection in my brain just to feel more acceptable for some audiences. I think it's important to promote diversity, but I don't think that we should be celebrating specific identities in order to bring them into the light. Like, let students be diverse on their own, but if the administration's saying that they're going out of their way to make it a safer place just for trans kids, then just using it as an example, it's like having your, it's like having that one high school friend that keeps you around because you're trans or because you're black to say that they have a more diverse group of friends. It's kind of like that. So, well, I'd say it's good to have a diverse campus. I'd rather just let the students do it naturally rather than forcing it on the students. The bathroom situation is a bit of an enigma, the enigma on its own because I did I actually met with the administration last week, and from what I'd heard, they hadn't been doing much. They'd been stonewalling the whole editorial with the mark was really salty, but. When I talked to them, they actually sounded really willing to get things done. And yeah. they were like, yes, we're thinking about changing these bathrooms. We want to visit Carlmont because they have multi-stall bathrooms and see what they're doing and why it works well. And they've actually made steps in that regard. So I think they're trying. The only issue is they don't know how to help make it a safer environment. Yeah. But they're definitely trying to understand this better. We just need to get a dialogue going. I'd say that's a bit of a hard line because in the media, they treat it a bit like a sensitive subject and it's harder to get it right because, like, what happened recently in the news is, like, they had to cut an actor because they are going to act a trans role, but people argued that because they don't know what it feels like to be transgender, they can't properly act as that character, so they got cut from that and they have to find somebody else. So I think it's hard to find, to fulfill, because if we're being honest, the whole LGBT community is a little bit of a niche audience, and it's hard to appease a niche audience in a really commercial landscape. So, well, I'd say I haven't really seen any trans actors or characters in media, and especially not non-binary because people still don't really accept that, that exists yet. Yeah. But I think in the future it'll be a little more recognized when we have younger generations picking up the torch.